Today we are going to discuss about meditation and food. What is connection between food and meditation? Why it is necessary for a meditator to know what he should eat and what he should avoid? Let me explain all these things in my presentation. And I want to share for that my presentation. In today's discussion, we would learn about meditation and food. What is the connection between food and meditation? Why a meditator should learn what to eat and what not to eat? Let me explain all these points in my presentation of today. Moderation in food is one of the essential conditions for a meditator. In fraction of meditation, we discuss about five requisites for meditating. Among them, one is moderation in food. We have to be moderate in our eating habits, in our dietary habits. One evacuates what one eats. This is small metaphor manifests a great truth. Our body and our sentiments are intimately connected with our food habits. Even thousands of years ago, the great masters and thinkers did a lot of research on food. They highlighted the connection of food with every aspect of life, with chastity, with the control of senses, with education, and with intellectual development. Thus, food is intimately connected with man's overall development, physical, mental, intellectual, and emotional. From the scientific point of view, balanced food or balanced diet is good for our health. The old maxim was moderate eating. Balanced diet is the modern form of the moderate eating. Balanced diet in science and religion has been given very much importance. According to the scientists, 150 gram fat is enough. According to the World Health Organization, 50 gram of fat per day would suffice for a male. The quantity of balanced food for an individual has been worked out to be 250 gram per day. In the Jain scriptures and other expository works, the food has been discussed from the viewpoint of practicing austerities and control over the senses and emotions. For a religious person, it is not a question of health preservation alone, but also and principally a question of observing self-restraint and for that he is supposed to be conscious about his food. Lecture meditation is not only a technique of meditation, it is a whole technique of living. Breath and food are two fundamental basic basis of life. Life lasts as long as respiration lasts. No breath, no life. And this we have seen in the last pandemic period. So the basic element of life is breath. The second very important element for life is food. 
a male constitutes continues living as long as he eats. Discretion in eating is very much important. Taking food begins with the first movement of birth and it lasts till the end of life. For the purity of mind, one must know when to eat, what to eat, how much to eat, and why to eat. Why it is so important to know what to eat? We know that food has effect on our body and mind. And not only body and mind, but emotion and also on self. It is said that red food coloring creates hyperactivity in children while refined sugar can cause emotional instability. Hot and pungent spices, garlic, onion, salt, coffee, black tea and meat agitate the mind. Pre-cooked and overripe food, alcohol, cigarettes and other drugs dull the mind. Processed, processed food and canned food should be avoided. Our health is directly affected by what we eat. So looking at these looking at these points, we can see that how food is intimately connected with our body, mind, emotion, and self. Now it is our choice. Depends on our choice that what kind of food we like or we want to take. We can transform our body into a temple in which our spirit can live with integrity and harmony with our mind and body. It is not only a matter of intellectually knowing what we should or we or should not eat. It is a question of how we want and choose to live. How do we deal with our emotions? How develop, evolve, and integrated is our mind, body, and spirit. Are we making conscious choices about how we are living? Are we aware of the impact of these choices? What to eat? Non-vegetarian food adversely affects our dispositions. Recently, COVID-19 has proven it. Similarly, people start taking intoxicants. The consumption of liquor and all kinds of tobacco preparations distorts our mentality. Not only do the intoxicants distort our character, but they are also principally responsible for many physical diseases. A campaign against the consumption of tobacco is all in America, Sweden, and Canada. Tobacco causes cancer. Liquor impairs the liver and the lungs. Liquor and tobacco together largely account for the occurrence of cancer. Ayurveda, which is a well-known medical science of India, and which is based especially on plants, also talks about food and its impact on our mind, body, emotion, and spirit. It refers to three types of food, sattvic, rajasic, and tamasic. What sattvic food is? Healthy food, healthy body. Fruits, grains, most vegetables come under sattvic food and keep body very, very healthy. Rajasic, rajasic food disturbs the mind, excites patience, and all types of spicy food comes under this category. Tamasic, it dilutes mind. Alcohol and other drugs 
animal flesh, etc., are considered as toxic food. If possible, one should avoid all these things. Eating regulations for spiritual well being. There are three, three types of uh, food which have been considered for spiritual well being. The first one is it, it means the food which is beneficial from the health point of view, from the mental peace uh, point of view, for emotional well-being and for spiritual well-being, that food is known as hit food. So seasonal fruits and to take food on regular time is considered beneficial for our health and overall diversity. The second category of food is meat, that is moderate quantity or less variety. If you are taking food in moderate quantity, not excess, and there are less varieties, then this kind of food is considered as meat. The third is the positive emotions, eating with pure and positive feelings, cooking with positivity are considered as the rhythm. So we can see that these three things are very important for our spiritual well-being. If we are taking food like hit with and rhythm, that helps a lot us to grow in to the spirituality. Nowadays, we are learning about vegetarianism and veganism, and there is a great movement of veganism in all over the world. Almost 10% of the population of the world has started vegan diet. So what is vegetarianism and what is veganism? These are two best alternatives for us to remain healthy from all points of views. Vegetarianism, it is used in the sense of supporter, believer, basically translating to advocate for the plant-based lifestyle. So these vegetarian people, they emphasize or they say that we should take the food which is based on plants. And especially in Jainism, vegetarianism is being practiced for centuries. Veganism, in present time, veganism is get, big, getting a big momentum and people are converting into veganism with the speed. So you can see that what is veganism? A philosophy and way of living which seeks to explain as far as possible and practicable, all forms of exploitation of and cruelty to animals for food, clothing, or any other purpose, and by extension, promotes the development and use of animal free alternatives for the benefit of all animals, including humans and the environment. In dietary terms, it denotes the practice of dispensing with all products derived wholly or partly from animals. So now the world is looking for this vegan diet. Veganism, Dr. T. Corey Campbell argues, animal proteins are the prime sensitive Sarcinogen research also shows that eggs are as sarcinogenic uh, as cigarettes. No chemical sarcinogen is as likely to cause cancer as animal protein. Higher fat types raise estrogen levels. Vegan diet has no added cholesterol and doesn't promote the growth of cancer cells. 
fiber, which is a kind of new nutrient and uh, plentiful uh, and in plentiful uh, quantity in the tribes. It helps our bodies eliminate excess estrogen that might cutting cancer risk. So vegan diet is very helpful to remain healthy, to be free from the disease like cancer. Campaign against stop smoking. With increasing interest in dietetic so people are becoming more circumspect. The climate of non-smoking is developing in countries where smoking was heavily prevalent. In America alone, two to three million of people have abandoned smoking. Smoking is prohibited in government offices. There are non-smoking rail and cars in Switzerland. Smoking is not allowed in public places. Smoking is prohibited even in parks and gardens. A great many restrictions have been imposed upon smoking in many countries. Each packet of cigarettes carries a statutory warning. Smoking is injurious to health. In spite of all these warnings, how many people are becoming conscious of avoiding such kind of drugs or smoking? Sugar and salt, they are part and parcel of our food. But we should know that excessive use of sugar and salt is no less dangerous. The naturopaths call sugar a sweet poison. For good health, it is most desirable that we give up taking white sugar altogether. The minimum intake of sugar is helpful in the preservation of health. Eating too much salt is tantamount to impairing one's kidneys. According to the heart specialist, a person needs two grams of salt per day at the most. One cons consumes 20 to, 10 to 20 grams of salt or even more in a day. Such excessive intake of salt can only spoil one's health. So we have to be very much conscious of in using sugar and salt in our daily dietary habits. Now we we'll see that what is the effect of food on our emotion. Food also absorbs the energy of the individuals who prepares, uh, prepares cells, distributes, harvests, and grows the food. And I B M research scientist Marcel Boger demonstrated the effect of the energy of those in contact with the food. His experiments showed that food prepared with love not only tastes sweeter, but changes the chemical structure of the food. So we have to be very much attentive to all these factors that who is cooking, who is selling, who is distributing, harvesting, and growing food. Not only about the substances of food which we are taking in daily routine or our own dietary habits, but we should also learn about all these other factors which are have also great role in uh, what we say in making food and if food is having some kind of negative emotions from them they can also adversely affect our own emotions importance of fa fasting therapy in Jains some great significance is a taste to fasting the Jains undertake fast from a spiritual point of view, of course, 
the people in the East to have developed fasting as a therapy. Mahatma Gandhi, who was the great politician of India and was is known as the father of India, has shed a good deal of light on fasting. Dr. Delton, a celebrated American physician, makes use of fasting therapy in the treatment of various diseases. He has done a lot of research on dietetics and fasting. Dr. Delton makes a patient undertake fasting for 10 days, 14 to 30 days, and even for 50 days, depending on the problem of the patient. He has successfully treated many diseases through this fast, fasting therapy. So fasting is also considered as the method of a treatment. Fasting, a meditator should also do this kind of uh, fasting exercise. Fasting is one exercise and I will is another one. I will means you have to take food, meal, only once in a day, and in meal you have you can take only the dry boiled grain without mixing any other ingredients. To eat less, to consume a limited number of items, one should experiment with all these during practice of meditation so that he can go easily into deeper meditation. Dr. Boyle got rid of diabetes by also taking this iron of rogue rice. In his practice, he might have taken some little amount of rogue rice with water for every day for 10 days and just once in a day. And by this practice, he has got rid of diabetes. The exercise of ambil or of eating lace or taking food in a small quantity or complete fasting all together, all these have proved to be important factors in the maintenance of not only physical health, but also for the preservation of emotional health. Food abstinence is considered as fasting. Fasting makes it easy to overcome bad habits and addictions even. Many people have overcome tobacco, alcohol addictions, and even drug addictions by fasting. Fasting repeatedly dissipates dissipates the craving for nicotine, alcohol, caffeine, and other drugs. Fasting promotes the drying up of abnormal fluid accumulations such as edema in the ankles and legs and swelling in the abdomen. Fasting restore, restore, restores um, taste and appreciation for wholesome natural food. So in this way, fasting is considered very, very healthy from many different points of views. You can see also importance of fasting through the Dr. Relfan Clinic. Fasting promotes detoxification according to this cleaning clinic. As the body breaks down, its weight preserves, it mobilizes and eliminates stone toxins. Fasting gives the digestive system a much needed rest. After fasting, both digestion and elimination are invigorated. Fasting promotes the resolution of inflammatory processes such as the in rem, rheumatoid arthritis. Fasting quits allergic reactions including asthma and hay fever. So these are the results which have come out of the scientific studies of fasting in, through Dr. Relfa Clinic.
Eating with silence. While eating, one should practice silence. And why we should practice this silence? One should not even speak during a meal, nor laugh, nor indulge in conversation, because taking food is also fraud with risk. Our body functions in a particular way. The alimentary duct and the glottis are both covered by one flame. When we are not eating, the flame is lifted, leaving the glottis open. If we talk and laugh while eating and the glottis remains open and a particle of food enters the wine when we pipe, it can result in death. So it happens sometimes we feel uh, some, uh, what we say, some um, kind of uh, problems in our throat when we are talking while taking food. So it is necessary that when we, we are taking food, we keep silence so that we can enjoy the food and the food can go inside without any problem or issue. Eating is a, also a kind of, a, uh, what to say, uh, practice in which uh, we have to be very much conscious and not only the conscious, but we have to be very reflective and meditative. While eating, we must exercise mindfulness. One must be fully aware of the action of eating that I am eating. He should not have any other things in his mind than what he is eating and how he is eating. According to Ayurveda, while eating food, one's mind should be fully devoted to eating and not to anything else. This constitutes an important exercise of one's spiritual practice in the sense that we can eat without going into any kind of reaction or attachment uh, and aversion. So that is the big benefit or spiritual benefit of of who were taking dietary habits or dietary practices when we are taking food with silence. The technique of eating. There is a proper method of eating. One must choose well the food one eats. Men choose the food at the time of taking it. A beast choose it later while ruminating. To eat without chewing is the surest way to compare the intestines. There is very famous Indian slogan that you should eat water and you should drink food. It means if you are taking even water, you should chew the water in your mouth the way that like the food. And when you are taking food, you should chew the food in the way it should be a, uh, in the very liquid form so that uh, you can have more and more enzymes from your mouth while you are chewing. And that can that kind of food can be very digestive and energetic for our body. What is significant in consumption? Food constitutes an important feature of our life. We must consider it from various aspects. Food must accomplish the following five objectives. Increase in our vigor. If you are taking food and we are not getting any energy for our, our health or for our body, then that kind of food should be avoided. Feeling up of deficiencies. We might have some deficiencies of some elements and for that we have to be conscious what kind of food is good for our health and how we can come, uh, what we say, uh, uh, how we can uh, complete our deficiency or how we can remove our deficiency. Evacuation of heterogeneous waste 
that is also very important part of our eating. If you are taking such kind of food which is creating any kind of uh, constipation, gastric troubles, we have to be very much alert. Acquisition of light thumbnails. This is very, very important factor. After taking food, if we are feeling any kind of laziness or inactiveness, then we have to think about our dietary habits, what kind of food we are taking, because of that we are eating uh, this kind of laziness in our body. Uh, after taking food, our body should be very light. We should feel very much light. Uh, less in us rather than less in us. A feeling of joy and well-being. So this is the uppermost uh, important factor of eating. When we are eating, our main purpose is to feel joyful and also to think of our to get uh, well-being from our diet. Evacuation of heterogeneous waste. An important secret of health is the avoidance of extraneous refuse that forms the basis of naturopathy. The essence of naturopathy may be stated in a sentence the more the accumulation of excreta in the body, the greater the ill will, whereas proper purgation of this excreta ensures good health. What is old age after all? Old age means the accumulation of waste matters. If there is no proper evacuation of waste stuffs, the arteries would grow rigid. The elasticity of the body would be adversely affected. Old age would set in sooner. The face will be covered with wrinkles and one gets efficiency reduced. So these all are the harmful results if our stomach is not getting cleaned on time. One kind of therapy which is uh, also very much uh, important to cure some diseases and also from spiritual point of view. So urine therapy. Urine therapy is nowadays in work to cure cancer and some other such kind of uh, prop health problems. In Jain tradition, we uh, practice Moi Parima, that is a kind of a urine, uh, which is being taken as uh, food, once in a day or twice in a day, I know. So, and uh, is, it is also considered a method of treatment. In the Jain text of Pravhar and Hashya, it is written, he who properly undergoes urine therapy, his body grows healthy and radiant like gold. There were many such therapies which have now gone into oblivion, but in the West, we are finding that there is there are a lot of researches which are going on on these different elements, natural elements. Now, in concluding remarks, I would like to say that increase of vitality, recoupment of lost energy, evacuation of heterogeneous waste, a feeling of lightness and well-being, eating which contributes to the achievement of these five objectives may be said to be moderate and beneficial. And the aid, I would say that sattvic diet plus silence minus patience is a spiritual diet. We have to be very uh, conscious about this formula of spiritual diet and try to adopt the, this kind of diet more and more which is uh, very beneficial 
for our overall well-being. With this, I finish my talk. I have suggested some readings in the particular week of this particular topic. Might be you have gone through it. If you have any questions, any queries, or any readings which you have already done regarding this uh, food and health issues or food and medication, you can also share all those things with general activity. And I will try my best to answer to your queries. So thank you very much for your patience and uh, attention.